Anyhow, uh, today I'm going to present you with one geology, uh, which I manage at, at the moment. Uh, and my talk is going to be about uh, how a distributed system that we have uh, in one geology uh, could help us overcome some of the difficulties we've been facing uh, in the past seven years since one geology has existed. So, okay. One geology was initiated in 2007 uh, because in 2008 there was an international year of planet Earth. So it was sort of uh, a flagship of that year, bringing uh, geological uh, scientists, uh, especially geological surveys from around the globe, to a common table to serve, to actually start serving geological data on a global scale. So it was a, a volunteer initiative for the first six years. After it became rather serious, we decided, of course, we need to, uh, to assure long-term sustainability. So we became a consortium. And, of course, we've tried to use the modern technology, of course, as I said, to, to serve geological data uh, from around the globe. So what are the achievements that we've accomplished in this past seven, eight years, we've been able to mobilize the existing network of geological service, surveys. At that time, only geological surveys were involved in one geology, which is not the case today. Uh, anyhow, we were able to, uh, to use this network to start serving geological data in an interoperable and standardized way, which is very important. We are all here today because we face similar challenges, and you know how, how different formats can cause huge pain when bringing them together uh, to use them at the same time. And, of course, we've used uh, this, this knowledge to accommodate the needs that each of us had to, to overcome difficulties each of us had to then start actually serving geological data. And not only on the global scale, we were also quite successful bringing down this initiative to the regional level, such as Europe, United States, and Asia. As I said, in October 2013, we became a consortium with a clear governance, with formally defined rules. Previously, they were sort of loosened. And with membership commitment, of course, since we want, wanted to sustain for a long time, we needed some uh, commitments also. And, of course, we set up ourselves quite uh, ambitious objectives. Currently, we have 119 members. We have 21 principal members, two corporate and two um, associate members. Actually, the number is 20 two principal members since my, my uh, presentation was sent to Mustafa, because we just uh, spent it for one edition. We have 30, 138 participating countries from those uh, participating organizations, from those 119 member countries, and we are providing currently more than 300 data sets, and this number is, is growing as we speak, because uh, members keep uploading their services uh, almost on a weekly basis. We are formally supported by UNESCO, IOGS, ICSU, and GEO. This is the governance structure. I won't go into it in details. It's different with every different organization. But it import it, what's important is our objectives. Uh, we want to be the global provider of geoscience data that is geological and geology-related uh, data. And since many of our members have gained lots of experience and knowledge through these years, we are also uh, very committed to transfer this knowledge to developing countries because we feel that everybody should be involved, uh, everybody can learn from everybody. So we also uh, count to learn from those that are in the process of, of becoming our members. And of course, we want to use this initiative 
as a sort of PR for our discipline. So what's the system behind this name? Uh, one, one, as I said in the, at the beginning, one geology is not a, an usual, a very usual system because we are not centralized, we don't have a repository. Instead of that, we have a distributed data system. And I'll tell you at the end why this is working and why not the centralized system uh, could work. So the distributed system means that every data provider stays in control with their data. They provide the, their data through their servers to the main portal, but the data stays with the data providers. And since it's the distributed data system, it ensures that each time the data is updated with the data provider, it's immediately updated uh, through the portal. So we have the most up-to-date data as possible. But not all the, the participants can serve their data through their servers, so we have established a sort of buddy system. For example, my previous geological survey in Slovenia services, still services the data for Albania, Serbia, Bosnia, and, uh, and Herzegovina, and Montenegro. So those nations that don't have the capabilities can ask neighboring country or somebody else to serve the data for them. It's still better than asking some past colonial country to serve the data. Now you see why we have a distributed system. Okay, and at the beginning we, we said, okay, we're going to serve the data in whatever, call, whatever format it is, but eventually, of course, demands grew up and we needed to standardize uh, the data that is served. So, Everybody that serves the data needs to comply to, spa uh, to spatial, uh, open geospatial standards, and that is double MS and double FS uh, types of, of format. And what that enables is to tackle cross-border or regional or continental uh, challenges. So the technical facts. This is a little bit boring for those that are not into technical things, but still it is important to those that deal with, uh, with uh, technical issues when data is concerned. So we are based on interoperable principles using GeoCIML 3.2, and 3.3 is just being released, and it's going to be true Inspire compliant. So Inspire is European Directive for, for Geospatial uh, Information. And maps are, as I said, uh, on distributed service around the globe from our uh, members. And once the, the user goes onto the portal, it sends the demand to that server, and then that server through the portal delivers the data directly uh, to the end users. I already said all the maps and services are delivered via uh, international standards. And Despite the fact that we have the distributed data system, we do have a centralized metadata system, which helps our users, even if some server is not available, if it's down, to help the users to at least locate the, the provider and eventually get in contact with, with that provider if it's not available instantly. We've uh, developed the portal uh, to display and aggregate numerous maps at the same time, and also we've tackled the issue of different projections uh, of maps. Uh, we've recently added some additional additional features to the to the portal, which are more cosmetic ones, but still they enable some simple querying by the end users and producing some on the fly results. I already mentioned the body system and you can then uh, when you decide to five minutes no problem when you decide to download the information or transfer it you can do it that in different in different formats. Um, as I already said so, um, standardization is important so we needed a sort of uh, a key, keyword list uh, just recently uh, we've developed or we adopted one for geology and related themes. 
And the coverage we have currently is like this. So the green ones are the service providers, the yellow ones are just participants trying to deliver their service. The portal through which we uh, deliver or we, through which we service this data looks like this. This is the, the uh, front page uh, and it enables then the standard, uh, standard tools to browse through the data. I already mentioned this, some recent uh, uh, developments, simple query and then display in a different way or on the right uh, produce uh, a simple statistical uh, feature of the of, uh, analyzed area. I said the catalog is centralized immediately after the data is put, uh, the metadata is put into the catalog, it gets uh, uh, distributed around to different international catalogs, geo or geos as their system is one of those. So what are the advantages of distributed data system? I've mentioned the political issue. It's very delicate with geological data. You can imagine many mining companies having different affinities to geological information around the globe. So many Countries, many nations, many geological surveys weren't really keen to serve or to give their data away to, to some uh, centralized system, but the distributed system works. Not everywhere, but it works. Uh, so that also enables us to instantly update our information, and to some extent, it enables the, uh, the resilience of the system to potential failures. If just one part, part fails down, the rest is still working. Of course, there are drawbacks to distributed data system. While I said on, on one hand, you have the, the resilience to, to failure, but on the other hand, not, uh, not all the data is available 24 seven. So one of the possibilities could be backup in the cloud, but this is already similar to to centralize systems, so we should be careful with that in the future if we want to develop it. We are more, much more vulnerable to hacking. We have lots of different softwares and hardware, so we need to address this issue also when we, when we connect with our uh, members. And standards, different geological services in the past use different standards, so uh, to, to actually have one standard is sometimes, sometimes very demanding, but we are working on very well-developed cookbooks to help each member to comply with, with these standards. We've been serving only geological maps in the past, but we've uh, tackled the issues what to do in the future. So scientific papers, 3D uh, models, different uh, geological thematic data, hidden geological uh, data that is still in the drawers, that's still in the ar archives of geological service or uh, research institutions around the globe. These are all challenges that we will face in the future. And of course, we use this network to integrate different regional initiatives on the global, on the global scale. And all the data are, of course, to reference. So thank you for your attention.